Hello everyone, it's Liz, Dairy Public Library's resident um, cult and weird movie expert and one of Dairy Public Library's just resident film nerds. It is Friday, TGIF. Uh, I am joined here with my little kitty, Hilo. You can't go on the table, kitty. Um, and we're here to give some free recommendations. Oh, I keep trying to make you an internet star, but you, no one wants, you won't let anybody look at your cute face. I don't know. He's a very tiny cat. He's like six pounds and he's an old man. Um, so today is I don't get off the table. Freebie Friday, uh, meaning we're talk going to talk about movies that are available for free on the internet, um, legally for free. So there are sites like Crackle, Vudu, and Tubi that provide free film services. Um, I can't talk about the illegal means of getting free movies unless, uh, you know, you want me to go through my entire pirate phase in college. <laughs> Anywho, we're going to start with Crackle, which has a good mix of classic films and new films. Uh, the first is what we're going to talk about is the great thriller Marathon Man. So if you've never seen this, this is Dustin Hoffman. This is the um, beginning of a lot of people's fear of dentists. It's the uh, is it safe line. If you've never seen this, I would definitely recommend it. It's a really good thriller. I think it overall holds up very well. Um... Sometimes when you watch older movies, the older they get, the more dated they are. Um, but I think Marathon Man holds up really well. And again, this has scared numerous people away from the dentist's office, which it shouldn't. You should go to the dentist. But still, great movie. Going a little older, but still very classic, is um, the great film Sunset Boulevard. Uh, this is a movie that um, has been oft copied, oft replicated, uh, but... You can never really do a one-to-one -one copy, but it has been, like, this movie is the template for so many other films now, especially, in some cases, film noir. Um, again, it's another one of those, if you have not seen this movie, what are you doing? This is film history in this case. And especially with something like Sunset Boulevard, you go back and watch this, and even if you haven't seen it, you have likely seen a film or a TV show that has tried to replicate or pay homage to certain aspects. Um, and third on Crackle, which is definitely more of a, um, I don't want to say a guilty pleasure, but definitely a film, a TV movie that was a big deal in the 90s, the Diana Ross Brandy TV film Double Platinum. Um, I think if you are exactly my age, and maybe a little older, the idea of Diana Ross, like a person, a woman we knew as a diva performer, and Brandy, one of the hottest acts around in like 98, 99, together in one movie was like heads exploding. Kind of like the Brandy version of Cinderella. It's like, oh my god, Brandy and Whitney Houston. Also, similar in that vein, speaking of Whitney, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey teaming up for that Prince of Egypt song. It was just like our brains exploded. We couldn't handle it. Um, it's not the best movie, but I think in terms of a TV film, it's a really, I think it's fine. Um, Diana Ross and Brandy both have good screen presence, and there's a lot of good music on there. But I think this might need to be a for 90s kids only. Um, or, I sh yeah, just early 30-somethings only. We're the only ones who will appreciate this. On to Tubi, um, another sort of a cult favorite childhood movie for a lot of people, but I actually think it's still funny and actually kind of interesting because of some of the uh, young stars in it, Troop Beverly Hills. So Shelley Long, once she decided, I can be a movie star, I don't need cheers, not a great decision, Shelley Long. Um, she's in this comedy, and it's... Again, worth watching because Jenny Lewis, who is far more famous as a singer now, is in this movie. Uh, Carla Gugino, who you've probably seen in a lot of films, is in here um, as a young camper. It's overall, I think, still pretty funny. It lags a bit, but I think if you want a comedy to pass the time or if you have good memories of it, it's still worth revisiting. Um, the next is a movie my best friend and I really loved when we were in high school. And it doesn't get talked about as much in the sort of high school movie um, pantheon, probably because it was trying to say a little bit more. 
Um, the film Saved, starring Gina Malone, um, Mandy Moore. This is way before This Is Us, obviously. And um, actually, a one of the few adult roles from Macaulay Culkin. It was this in Party Monster. And if I had to recommend the two, I'd recommend this. Party Monsters is not for everybody. Um, it is a movie about cliques, but it takes place at a Christian high school. And this is based a lot on the experiences of the writer-directors. And so this girl is a part of like the queen bees at this high school. She turned, she is pregnant and then kind of learns, you know, who her, I should say her real friends are, who the people who ostracize her. And then she kind of finds that some of the people who she kind of dismissed as, you know, you know, being, I guess, less holy than thou are the ones who actually kind of back her up. So I think if you want a teen comedy that has a little bit more going on, I think this movie is really good. Um, I love Gina Malone. I just like seeing her in anything. And Mandy Moore, if you love watching her on This Is Us, this is kind of interesting because you're starting to see like, oh, Mandy Moore is pretty good at playing a character. She's not just being herself she's actually making choices and crafting a persona for the person she's playing and um also Ava Omori who is Susan Saran's daughter's in this so pretty star-studded cast for a movie that doesn't get talked out about a much today um and finally definitely not as fun of a watch but still a very good movie uh Fruitvale Station it stars Michael B. Jordan and um this came out in 2014, kind of right when the Black Lives Matter stuff, like right before it started. And um, it's about Oscar Grant, who was, um, you know, an unarmed man who was killed in San Francisco, pretty much doing nothing. And it's one of those movies where you watch it and you're like, it's just sad. Because you're like, wow, it seems like nothing's changed. But what this movie is about is it's not about the event that ended its life. It's really about... Um, it's the day, the day of the day before everything happened, but what it shows you is this person wasn't just their death. They had a whole life that they had lived before and, you know, they had a whole life ahead of themselves as well. And again, uh, if you've seen Michael B. Jordan stuff like Creed and Just Mercy, this is his first like big dramatic role as well. So, um, you know, I, I often like going back and seeing sort of the first, the turning point for a lot of actors, like where did they start to really show that they could be who they were going to become. So it's very uh, good to watch for that aspect as well. On to Voodoo, uh, a favorite film of mine by a favorite director of mine, The Royal Tenenbaums, directed by Wes Anderson. Um, if you're familiar with Wes Anderson, you're probably very familiar with his look. Um, he is definitely an auteur. Uh, you know, meaning someone who has their own way. Their films look a certain way. They direct a certain way. They have a certain style. And um, Hollywood isn't a great place for our tours right now, especially with the global market, uh, you know, the global market being the big focus. But Wes Anderson is st is one of the few auteurs we have, and he manages to actually get uh, get people in the seats. One of the other things COVID took away from us this year is, uh, you know, he had a new movie coming out. I don't know when we'll see that. Tears. But Royal Town Bombs is great. And this was, he, he had Bottle Rocket and Rushmore before this, but this was the movie that really broke him into the mainstream. He, so he went really from the indie circuit to getting awards attention and getting mainstream attention. I actually went with a friend to see this. Um, it was playing in like, the, I don't know if it was the Regal, but it was like an AMC style theater in West Springfield, Massachusetts. So I'm like, oh, well, look at that. So, um, but it's great. It's a big ensemble cast. Everyone's fantastic in it. Um, this is one of the few times I've ever liked Gwyneth Paltrow in a movie. She is probably one of my least favorite performers, but I love her in this. I think she's great. And it's one of those, man, maybe if someone had given her more roles like this, she wouldn't be peddling goop right now. But... I would definitely recommend that. Uh, if you like horror, don't worry, everybody. I got you. I'm not going to let anything go without a horror recommendation. The Exorcist is on Voodoo, um, considered by some to be, not me, to be the scariest movie ever made. Uh, it's definitely a shocking movie to one where I'm like, how did they make this in the early 70s? Um, you know, great, uh, again, once again, great performances and especially when people talk about stuff like Midsummer and Hereditary and Get Out and this idea of like, oh, horror is now becoming like awards bait. And I'm like, The Exorcist was nominated for awards. There has always been schlocky B-horror and there has always been well-crafted horror or, 
you know, movies that happen to be horror that are made very, um, you know, just well made. They're made to be actual movies and have actual performances. Um, fun fact, apparently Jane Fonda was offered Ellen Bernstein's role, but did not want to do this. So that's sort of a cool what a, what could have been. Um, but, you know, I still think this is a good movie. This is not really high on my horror pantheon. Uh, it's, for me, it stops being scary once we know what's happening. Whereas a movie like Rosemary's Baby, I am just frightened because we don't really know the truth until the end. But... I still think it is a very effective film and a great example of filmmaking, regardless of whether or not you like the genre. And I did find something for the kids. Um, if you like Sesame Street or grew up with it, um, which if you don't like Sesame Street, I don't want to know you. Follow that bird is on voodoo. Um, this actually, when I was in high school, I had a babysitting gig like so many other people. And follow that bird was something I would bring. It, would, it was in my video arsenal for the kids. It is just a very charming little movie. Uh, it's Big Bird. We all love Big Bird. Sesame Street's great. It's timeless. There's a reason it's still going. It works for everybody, and it works for children of all ages. So I did say I would talk about one of my favorite movies of all time, and I saw. I decided to check on a whim if archive.org had this movie. So archive.org is like a big, you know, big internet archive. You can find a lot of open source stuff there. And there are some older movies on there that are public domain or just no one's caring about it rights wise. So if you ever want to find something, go type it in, see if you find it. But years ago, before it was back and put back in print by the Criterion Collection, I was obsessed with the movie Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. And I actually found it on archive.org. And lo and behold, it's still there. What is Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, you ask? Well, um, it is a sequel, spoof sequel, to Valley of the Dolls, and it is written by none other than Roger Ebert. Um, I really don't want to spoil anything. It is wacky. There's no other movie like this. It is, I think, actually one of the best satire spoof movies there's ever been. It's a spoof of a very specific type of movie. Um, I should say it's definitely not safe for work. Um, it is directed by Russ Meyer, who did kind of make, I would say high class smut, but still smut, but it is a bizarre little chapter in film history. And as far as I'm concerned, this is Roger Ebert's best thing he's ever accomplished. Forget all of his years of film criticism work, including getting people like me to take film seriously. No, this magical piece of film is the best thing he's ever made. And if you're willing to take the ride... More power to you. I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you on Monday. Bye.